This film was definitely one of the ones I had to sit and think about afterwards and wonder if the good things outweighed the flaws. X-Men Apocalypse is the third movie in the rebooted X-Men franchise, the sixth film in the X-Men franchise, the eighth film if you count the Wolverine films, and the ninth if you count Deadpool. Ah, oh, we've had a lot of X-Men movies, haven't we? And honestly, I was quite surprised to see how overwhelmingly negative slash mixed the reviews were. I couldn't find a single good headline about this movie, and that really surprised me, because I actually enjoyed it quite a lot. Okay, so brief summary. X-Men Apocalypse is about the original mutant, Apocalypse, who is kind of coming back to life and just wants to destroy humanity, basically. And he gets together a team of the Four Horsemen to take down the world, and that includes our old friend Magneto and a newer, younger Storm. Also in there you've got Angel and Psylocke, who I actually felt were a lot more developed in this one. I feel like with past X-Men movies, the bad guys are just sort of there to help out the main bad guy, and I haven't even always known their names or anything about them, they're just sort of there to look cool. These ones I actually felt like we knew who they were. So that was one good thing, but I feel like the story was really the thing that let this film down. It was hard to kind of discern any sort of motivation for these bad guys. You know, nothing was ever explained on why Apocalypse really wanted to destroy the world or why these people followed him the way they did. Especially Storm, like Storm appears to have morals right at the beginning and then the next minute She's just helping Apocalypse blindly. It's like, what are you doing? And we're seriously running out of ways for Magneto to flip between good and bad. Like, I feel like the past three films have just been, you have good and you, Eric. No, I haven't. Yes, you have. No, I haven't. I hope that stops because it's starting to annoy me now. And the plot for this film was quite simple, which I think could have been refreshing, considering we've just come off of Days of Future Past, which was really quite complicated. But I felt like it was oversimplified to the point of being underdeveloped. Like, they didn't really explain much in terms of why this villain was back and doing what he was doing. It just seemed like he was there to be evil and be something for the X-Men to unite against, just because they needed something to unite against. I think a really big issue that this X-Men universe has is the fact that they're jumping forward like 10 years every time they make a film but these characters do not age. I mean, they actually poke fun of it in this film with Moira McTaggart, who is like meant to be 20 years older than when we first saw her in first class at this point, but the actress is just like looking the exact same. And they do poke fun of it, but it doesn't mean it's not there. Like just because you acknowledge it doesn't mean that it's not still a problem. I also expect to watch an X-Men movie and feel the biggest amount of cheese I will ever feel in a superhero movie ever. The amount of single tears I saw in this film was outstanding from not like a range of characters just whenever someone was emotional single tear great there was also a really cheesy moment where it did like a zoom in on hank mccoy's face and then he kind of did that turn to the camera and said something dramatic in slow motion i was like this is almost a parody at this point this is a parody shot this is not what you do to be serious in a modern film. It literally made me roll my eyes. It was just really quite bad. But I'm dwelling on the negatives. I'm overall giving this film a positive rating because I really did enjoy it and I appreciated what I saw on the screen. A lot of people seem to have problems with the over-reliance on CG. I didn't really get bothered by it. I thought the CG was pretty good. I mean, the amount of times these monuments have been smashed up in movies is reaching a really amazing high. But I still love seeing, I just love seeing all the X-Men's powers, especially now we've got like a young Jean Grey and a young Cyclops and they're all just able to kind of show off what they can do again. I've missed it. You've also got the ever amazing Evan Peters as Quicksilver. Quicksilver is just the life of these films at this point. He's just so fantastic. An X-Men movie is not an X-Men movie for me from now on if it doesn't have a Quicksilver sequence. They're just, oh, they're so good. And it brings in that comic relief and just, it's so funny and he's so carefree and relaxed. I love Quicksilver in these films. He's so good. I also liked how they made certain characters take steps back in order to let the new characters take the forefront. Like, we didn't see an awful lot of Mystique in this film, which I'm not really complaining because I'm not too keen on Jennifer Lawrence's Mystique. But I like that they really made her kind of take a step back so that we could focus on the younger ones, so Jean Grey, Cyclops, Quicksilver as well. It's nice that you can see it moving so that the films can keep going once these actors decide to leave. Because I think Jennifer Lawrence has said that this is her last performance as Mystique. I don't really have a problem with that, if I'm honest. But this film has some really great experimental sequences as well. There were kind of action sequences going on inside characters' heads while it related to the action that was going on in reality. I won't spoil what they are because they really are quite cool to see and how they tie in with all the other characters. But I really appreciated how they were trying to move forward and introduce new aspects to these characters. Especially Charles Xavier. Our lad Charles has been through a lot, hasn't he? 
I thought Magneto really was quite a throwaway in this film. I mean, he was great for the first hour, and then there's a certain scene that happens which is really, really great and really quite new for the X-Men universe. I hadn't seen anything to the calibre of that scene yet, but after that scene took place, he just kind of was there to stare at the camera blankly, the way Magneto stares at things blankly. That's literally all he did for the rest of the film. And what a waste of Oscar Isaac as well. I mean, Oscar Isaac is one of my favourite people on this planet, and he was just hidden behind the blue makeup of Apocalypse, and Apocalypse was just so one note and dull, and had no depth to him whatsoever other than being an evil, all-powerful mutant. That's literally all Apocalypse was. You want to find out a bit more about him? No, sorry, that you're not going to find out a bit more about him, he's just here to destroy your characters that you love. But honestly, I only really started to think about the faults in the story after I left, because while I was watching it, I was just so engrossed in what was going on on the screen. I loved the action sequences, I loved the new characters, I loved the upping of Quicksilver in this movie and kind of promoting him to an all-star X-Men or X-Man, whatever. I also have to give a shout out to the new Nightcrawler who is brilliant. I love Nightcrawler in X2 and was really disappointed when I didn't see him again so it's nice to finally have him back and Cody Smith McPhee is a really cool Nightcrawler. I'm looking forward to seeing more of him. I felt like the pacing in this film was pretty good apart from the beginning. When they were setting up Apocalypse I was just kind of sitting there not caring because I could see that there was going to be no depth to this character beyond he's old, he's evil, he's powerful, he's going to destroy the world. I knew I wasn't going to get any more than that so any time he was in contact with another character I just didn't really care. But I feel like once we had that out of the way and we knew that Apocalypse was going to be the big thing and his team were all established, once we got past that point I feel like it really started to pick up and the rest of it was pretty good. Overall this film did have quite a messy plot and wasn't always that interesting in terms of story but I appreciated it for what it was. I loved the action, I loved the experiments, I loved the characters mostly. And this is one of the longest X-Men movies yet, if not the longest, and I didn't feel like it was long at all. It seemed to actually go at the right pace and I didn't feel bored at any time apart from right at the beginning. But that was done pretty soon. Once we got back to the characters we knew and loved and introduced some of the younger versions of the character we used to know and love, it, fought, it was fine. That's when it picked up and that's when it got a lot better and I just stopped noticing things I had faults with because there weren't as many. I think I'd give this film a 7. I really really enjoyed it and I only really started to pick apart the plot afterwards but I feel like simplistic isn't always a bad thing especially when you've got something like Days of Future Past. Simplistic is not a bad thing. It's easy to follow, it's easy to understand, it's easy to appreciate but I feel like this one was just a bit too underdeveloped to justify it being as simplistic as it was and it kind of wavered my enjoyment of it a bit. There were faults in it and it's definitely the lesser of the two rebooted X-Men movies we've had so far but I don't think it was an absolute atrocity as other people are making it out to be. I just hope they stop repeating old tropes like Magneto being good then bad then good then bad because stuff like that is getting old after three movies and they feel like they can do so much more with these characters rather than just reverting what to what they've done before. I'm really excited to see what they do next. Thank you for watching my review of X-Men Apocalypse. I will see you in the next one.